Welcome back to our conversation with Senator Elizabeth Warren. And Senator, we're talking about the economy here. The emerging consensus is that the Federal Reserve policy of raising interest rates to curb inflation may be able to pull off the so-called soft landing where inflation eases without dramatic job loss. Now, you had warned of exactly that as part of a sharp, consistent critique of, of Fed Chairman Jerome Powell. Do you now acknowledge you were wrong? <laughs> so look at it this way. We have seen inflation come down. But think about the reasons that inflation has come down. Well, partly we've untwisted the supply chain kinks. That's helped bring prices down a lot. Um, gas prices, oil prices have come down. Commodity prices have come down. Uh, food prices have come down. I asked Jerome Powell in a hearing uh, in front of the Senate Banking Committee, does raising interest rates affect any of those? And he said, no. No, he said, raising interest rates, I said, what is it designed to do? And he said, well, he didn't want to use these words, but ultimately his point was it's to drive up unemployment. It's to get businesses to retrench and drive up unemployment, and that cools off demand. But if those aren't the problems that are triggering higher prices, then raising the interest rates is happening not totally independently, but it's not having all of the measured effects here. And here's what I worry about now, John, is that we're in a place now where one of the big drivers of high costs, especially here in Massachusetts, is housing. Mm -hmm. Higher interest rates does not make housing cheaper. We need 175,000 new homes, apartments, condos here in Massachusetts. And yet, what are the odds that someone is going to make that big investment, build those additional houses when interest rates are high? So the price interaction with interest rates is not a simple, the Fed raises interest rates and therefore prices go down. Well, speaking of housing demand, yeah. uh, uh, we have this crisis with a, a flood of migrants yeah. into Massachusetts and other states. They're being housed uh, in hotels and so forth at a cost of $45 million a month. Uh, and uh, Governor Healy came out the other day and uh, uh, had two uh, well, two really major points, I thought. One was she called on the feds to get their act together and release work permits for migrants who want to work. We need them uh, in various industries that are going begging for employees, and there's a bottleneck in D.C. What's the story with that? Uh, she's right, uh, and I have been on this. I am pressing. What's the problem? It's so, just bureaucracy? It is. It's a bureaucracy problem. So we have people here in Massachusetts who desperately want to work, who are saying, I'll get up early, I'll stay up late, put me to work. And they want to go to work because they want to earn that money, they want to support themselves, they want to support their families. Frankly, they want to get out of those shelters. Right. And they want to get into apartments, into regular housing that they can count on over the long term. Matching that, we have employers desperate right. for those workers who are saying, I need them. I'll send a van over to pick them up. Let, can they start now? Can they start this So afternoon? why aren't these permits released tomorrow? So the problem we've got is that there is a process for getting these permits, and it takes months. Now, part of the reason it takes months, every time I talk to the Secretary of Homeland Security about this, and we are... I'm beginning to think we're on speed dial over this because I'm, I'm yeah. pushing hard on this. He explains that they have their own budget issues and how many people they can allocate to managing the work permit part of their job. And this is a nationwide problem, not a problem solely yeah. here in Massachusetts. But even so, this is one of those, we could make lives better, we could make our economy better if we could just get the paperwork freed up and let people get to work. I want to slip in one more question here and remind our viewers to check back with us next week for part two of this interview when we'll focus more on politics. But can you give me briefly a, a, an update on the status of the funding for the Cape Bridges? Yes. I know the state has committed hundreds of millions. I, I'm uh, kind of worried that this is just going to be another big dig where we get stuck with a horrendous tab here in Massachusetts. So here's where we stand. We have two bridges that were built by the Army Corps of Engineers 
uh, to have a 50-year lifespan right. built 90 years ago. Right. So these bridges have to be replaced. No one disputes that. That's exactly right. So how are we going to replace them? It's money. And what, how are we going to get that money? We're going to layer that money in over time. Uh, the state now under Maura Healy has stepped up and said the state is now committed. She's talked about $700 million right. to start from the state. Uh, President Biden put into his budget a substantial amount to start the funding for the bridges. Um, we worked last year, uh, uh, Senator Markey and I and our whole delegation, on getting the bipartisan infrastructure package in place, which is a generational right. opportunity to build infrastructure. So here's where we are. We've got some money that's in President Biden's budget. Ed and I have gotten it through the Senate part of the budgeting. All right. Now so, the tough part. That's right. So stay tuned. But the state is also applying for money out of that bipartisan okay. infrastructure. So another way to describe this is there are lots of pots on the stove. Okay. We've got the heat under all of them. And what we're trying to do is cook up enough here that we've got the money to get those bridges built. But Hot. we will get them done. Here's hoping we don't get burned. Thank you, Senator. We appreciate it.